Hi there friends, welcome back to another video on paying it forward. This week on the video it's something quite specific um, and if you've ever used model driven apps before you may have come across using business process flows. Um, and I'm a big fan of using business process flows but sometimes the functionality of them is not what I want in them. Um, and there was something that was always bugging me which was how can I trigger certain events um, to happen when my business process flow would be let's say moved into the next stage um, and I found a way of doing that today which I thought was particularly interesting <clears throat> and I hadn't really found it easy to discover um, and I thought it would be worthwhile uh, taking a look together. So let's take a look. Alright so over here you can see I've developed a very basic application uh, which is to manage uh, active subscribers of course to the Paying It Forward YouTube channel. Uh, don't forget if you're not already subscribed make sure you subscribe and like the video. Um, what you can see is that I've all I've basically done is created a very simple form um, which we have here um, and it has a business process flow at the top uh, which I would use to be able to um, see if the subscriber has changed for a certain period so if they have then I would move the stage on uh, based on the request so I'll just fill, fill in a quick example however if I make a change to this to the business process flow for example um, and I want to go to the next stage nothing happens that nothing in the form actually changes to represent that uh, I've moved a different stage and so I wanted to find a way of doing this um, and so after a lot of research a lot of uh, work to try and find this information um, I finally discovered it in some small <laughs> very small short video of a couple of minutes um, and I thought it was too good not to share uh, so here's me paying forward uh, the video that I will link in the description where I originally found the approach to do this. So let's take a look. So if you come into your solution, uh, which is where I have the paying it forward application here, um, you can see I have a bunch of tables and the business process flow as well uh, in the processes section here. Uh, then there's a certain step that you have to add, which is if you hit the three dots and go to advanced, you can add the required objects and hit an OK. And what you will have seen there is that in the table section, it's gone from three tables to four tables. Um, and if we go into the subscriber journey uh, table, which represents the, ta the table underneath the business process flow, what you'll find in here is the business process flow stage. And it's called active stage, the date it was activated and the reference to which subscriber it is within the subscribers table uh, in this case. What we're going to do is use this new table to trigger a Power Automate flow uh, that will then come into the form and update the subscriber stage to represent the appropriate uh, business process flow stage. Let's get into it. So I'm going to come back into my solution and I'm going to come to all, hit new, select a new cloud flow, automated, and I'm going to call the flow name uh, subscriber business process flow trigger. Um, and we're going to select Dataverse. What you'll see when we select the change type is added or modified. Um, the table name is going to be the subscriber subscriber journey, uh, which represents that one. And this only has normally one scope, which is the organization scope. In addition to that, we're going to select columns. So we're going to come back to the table and we're going to look up the name of the active stage. In advanced options, we can find the logical name. Bring this back to the Power Automate flow and ensure that's the selected column that will trigger based on a change happening within that one. We select added or modified because we want to see also new ones or those that have been changed. What we want to do when this is triggered is we want to basically update the submission. So we need to be able to get the associated submission uh, related to that actual um, business process flow that's been triggered. So we're going to come to Dataverse and we're going to list the rows. What we're going to do is do the list rows um, action on top of the subscribers table. And this is so we can get the appropriate um, subscriber uh, related to the subscriber business process flow trigger. In this case, I'm going to save the flow and test it first so we can see what we get back and then we're able to um, match the appropriate uh, fields to do the filtering. 
I'm going to run a quick test. In this case, there hasn't been a previous test here, so we're going to run it. We're going to come back into the form and change the business process flow stage. So we're going to select this as yes and select the next stage and hit save. OK, and the flow has successfully run. Um, and what we can do is we'll get the, the outputs. And there's a couple of outputs in here. I'm just going to open them in VS Code so we're able to look at them more clearly. So what you'll see in the output is that we have the subscriber ID value here, which is the code that's provided. Um, so we want to be able to use that to basically reference the correct, let's say, subscriber within the subscriber table. We're also going to need the subscriber um, unique ID, which is in this column here. Um, and we can take it from the logical name. And we're going to use this in our flow to filter the rows. So what we're going to do is select the subscriber ID is equal to the, the subscriber's value. This will then return only that row. Uh, so we ensure that we're getting the appropriate row to update. Something I forgot to do uh, when I was uh, putting this together was to add the step before this one. Uh, which was to be able to return the actual names of the stages. Um, because if we look in the table, you'll see that we have the active stages here. But if we look at the details, it's not related to any table. So I found out that there is an actual table, but which you can find in Power Automate. So if I go here to a new step, we're going to add it in between. We're going to list the rows. So what I'm going to do is list rows for the process stages. It's the hidden table that we needed. And this will basically show you a history of all of the different process stages that your subscriber uh, was taken on um, in the business process flow. So if we give it a quick test, there's quite some information that's returned. And I'm going to put this into VS Code. And here we can find the example of how the response uh, is structured uh, for the long-term subscriber. Um, and after doing a bit of testing, I noticed that you can't just search for one unique ID. You actually have to combine two of them. And the ones that you have to use is the process ID value, which is located here. And you need to have this. And you also need the process stage ID, which is mentioned here. So we need to be able to use both of these within the request. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the process value come back to the flow and edit it. And we're going to filter the rows. And we're going to say the process ID is equal to. And what we're looking for for this one is the process value uh, that's selected from the previous uh, step, which is this one here, the process value. And then what we're also going to do is and we're going to take the process stage ID and that's going to be equal to, and this is important, the active stage. Make sure you pick the active stage, because if you don't, you'll have the same mistake like I did, which is you're looking for ages and wondering why you can't find it. OK, so now I've been able to return the business process for a stage. I'm going to do a quick compose step so we can double check that. And because it returns an array, I'm going to use an expression to get just the first output. I'll include the structure of this in the description down below. But we have the output, get business process for a stage, and then we want to get the first stage name uh, to be returned. So we just give this a quick test. You'll see in the response that we have returned the long term subscriber um, because that was what triggered the actual flow. So now we have basically be able to return the name of the business places flow stage. Um, and now we can configure the appropriate update to the subscriber table um, so that we can see that subscriber stage being changed when the business places flow stage is changing. What a mouthful of words, right? <laughs> so let's do that next. Now we're going to go back and hit edit and we're going to do a switch. And in this switch control, we're going to determine the compose step. Let's just quickly rename it. And then we're going to say when that name is equal to. And in this case, let's go back and take the names of the stages. We've got new subscriber watching content. Let's just start with those two. And inside of this action, I'm going to drag the one that I did before, um, which is the get appropriate subscriber row, um, which is where we want to return the subscriber um, based on the um, record that was updated or that was triggered in the business process flow. 
Um, and then we're going to make an update to that where we change the stage based upon um, what was changed in there. So in this particular case where we're updating the row, I'm going to take the row I ID and in, again I've basically used the same structure before which is to get the appropriate subscriber row, body value and then the first OData ID just because I don't want to have that apply to each step because we're listing rows even though it's only one row that's returned. Um, and I just realized here I put equals new subscriber but I have sort of started it with watching content because it defaults to new subscriber when the uh, process starts. So I'm just going to add in the next one which is long term sub. Um, and the final update I want to do in this update a row is to update the subscriber stage. So when it appears that they've um, completed the watching the content then they would be considered a short term subscriber at that point. So we would see the change in the stage. Shall we give this a test? Let's do it. We're going to come back into the application and we're going to create a new uh, entry. And you can see it defaults to new and we're going to call this one Power Automate PPF Test the Subscriber. We're going to look for the mod. We're going to based in the UK and have the Arabic language and we're going to hit save. Okay so the mod administrator has now been a subscriber for more than three months and so we're going to update the business process flow. We're going to change it to yes and hit the next stage and what you'll see that will happen in a second is that the subscriber stage will update automatically to the next stage. As you can see it's just flipped to short term and now you can basically see that the ability of adjusting the business process flow updates information directly within the application. Pretty cool stuff, right? So what did we cover today? First of all, I showed you that in some applications we often make use of the business process flow at the top of our application. But having that business process flow actually trigger events within your form uh, when you're using it can be sometimes a bit of a challenge because I haven't really found explanations that explain things well. Um, so by going into the process, activating the required objects, it turns on a table for you that represents the stages of the business process flow that you can then use within a Power Automate flow to trigger events to be able to make changes. You do this by detecting a change to the active stage ID. Using the process stages table to be able to discover the actual um, pro process stage it is that you want to determine an action on uh, based on using the process ID value and also the process stage ID value um, from the process and the active stage. You capture this in an output so that you can then use a switch control to define certain cases that you would then use to describe or to, to determine the change that you would want to make. I truly hope you found this video helpful. Um, for me, it was something when I discovered it earlier on today, I was really excited for all of the possibilities. Um, in the case that we're using it for, it's for a specific system inside of Microsoft uh, where we want to be able to trigger those changes because on that actual um, part of the form where the change is being made, we have other triggers on top of that uh, value that we want to uh, make happen as well. So for us, it was really important to be able to make that connection between the two. Uh, so that we could determine that change. Um, and we see the possibility of it, for example, using adaptive cards to send out uh, communications to stakeholders when the business process flow changes, or even you could use it for triggering requests to ask for people to provide additional information. So again, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Um, and don't forget, of course, as always, to pay it forward. Take care.